This is a highly experiential approach. In fact, we're going to be utilizing our clients' experience as the gateway into trance and to help them create therapeutic change. This methodology is super fast. Yes? You can't hear me. Okay, let me get a little closer, maybe. I think that works. Um, yeah. How, how, can you hear me in the back? Okay, I'll try to really elevate the voice. Let me know if you have trouble with that. Um, so where did I leave off? Okay, therapeutic alliance. We know all these different terms in therapy and in hypnosis. What we're going to be doing is just in allowing the client to show us what we're gonna do during the session versus uh, an approach where we might come in with a plan. So we're not gonna be using pre-talks, we're not gonna be using inductions, deepeners, techniques, scripts. It's just kind of a really fun way to work with people. It's a little intense, so I'm gonna have volunteers, uh, uh, a client and a hypnotist come up. And we're gonna be utilizing five principles. I'll go over those in a moment. That's all we're gonna be doing and we're gonna see what happens and what we can learn from it. Then we'll debrief and we'll do a Q and A. And I would like to get a second demo in if we can today. It'd be cool to get through too. Uh, if you're going to be a client, just have a real problem, right? Like something, something, oh, I am recording this now. I don't want it to be something that's super embarrassing for you, right? We're going to be talking about some sensitive stuff on the, on the front end. I want you to know that. Um, and our five principles, I'll go into that now. Really simple. Number one, listening, but we're going to be listening fully, right? Not listening to figure out what we're going to say next listening to really understand the person in front of us. It's such a powerful skill. Just that alone is gonna be worth the time. You can use that with your relationships, with your children, with your family. Uh, exploration. So that enhances the listening process because we wanna learn more about what's really going on. What's going on underneath the surface of the presenting problem? That's where we're gonna be targeting our approach. And then there's awareness, just becoming aware of things. The client's gonna be becoming aware of the uh, things underneath the surface at the same time that we are, which is cool. And uh, discovery, as we make discoveries, we're gonna see what resources, insights, really cool stuff shows up. But we're gonna be create, uh, creating the space they need to create the change. And the hypnotic phenomena may happen, may not happen, but I'm very curious to hear your thoughts afterward and uh, the outcomes we get. So that's a really, really brief overview. Do those five principles make sense? Pretty intuitive. So before we begin, uh, imagine the moment Humankind first sat down, like we are now. And maybe they were hunting, maybe they were gathering. They're hearing sounds in the background. Is that a wolf? Is that a bear? But they made a decision to listen to one person at a time. Maybe somebody stood up and spoke. Think about that moment. That is like the foundation of society. That's a massive shift in human evolution. What do you think might have been going through their minds in that moment? They have all the distractions necessary for survival, and they still made that decision to sit down and collaborate. And maybe that person sat down and someone else stood up. And were they just listening to one another, really trying to understand them, amidst the chaos of what it took to, to exist back then? So, <clears throat> that's really the approach I take when I'm thinking about client work. Um, we're complex systems as human beings, societies are complex, and uh, a lot of times on the front end, we wind, I wind up operating, uh, guess, I wind up guessing a lot if I'm not just allowing the client to show me what we need to do. Uh, it's sort of the foundation of the approach here. Does that all make sense? Okay, cool. That being said, let's jump into a demo. Who has a problem they want to work on? Be brave. I love when no hands come up. Yeah. That means it's gonna be really good. Court? Okay. Cool. All right, coming up. Can we get a round of applause for Court? Okay. Who wants to be a brave hypnotist? You'll learn way more than anyone else will. There we go. Jan, come on up. Folks, we gotta give Jan a hand. Yeah, diving in. So, I apologize. This is going to be a little bit pedantic at the start. Jan, uh, do you have any idea what Courtney wants to work on? No idea. Yeah. We've got to get. We got to start somewhere, right? Yes. Uh, so, what can we do to find out a little bit more? Ask a question. Yeah, I love it. Okay. <laughs> really simple. 
So, Jan, ask her what she wants to work on. Hi, Courtney. What do you want to work on today? Um, I want to work on the resistance I have to not being taken care of financially by my husband. Okay. So, I really love being taken care of financially by my husband, and also, I want to make more money than him. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's... So I'm going to interrupt at times just to point out certain things. You saw the one hand come up, and then we saw this nice motion here. Parts. Yeah, parts, parts yeah, are right? Parts. They're showing us it, right? The unconscious mind is always communicating. It's never not communicating. It's a little hard to figure out what we're doing. So uh, Betty Erickson talked about how Milton would listen with his eyes. And we have an example of it right there. What a gift. So. Listening, what would you like to explore the most about what she just said? There's no wrong answers. All roads are wrong. Right? They don't lead to it, they are. Husband wanting to make more money. And I would clarify. So it sounds to me what you're saying is that a part of you wants to be taken care of, and a part of you wants to make money on your own and what would the making more money on your own give you? Uh, yeah, so it feels like one side is being taken care of and the other side is being, it's freedom, yeah. more freedom. Yeah. Taking care of and, taking care of and freedom, that's, yeah. that's your two, mm -hmm. the two parts that are conflicting. Yes. And what would freedom, freedom give you? Other than freedom. Um, or what would freedom give you? Yeah. What does freedom mean to you as opposed to what it would mean to me? Um, so not having that, not having the freedom feels like being limited. So it would give me the freedom from feeling limited. Is that? And, sorry, I, just want to, oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I know this, I'm being <laughs> such a rude. When you're working this way with clients, there's not some guy in the middle yeah. interrupting. So it's just important to make some reference frames for what we're doing. Um, They're mute. Right. Not coming to do this yeah. next week. <laughs> so what we have is uh, this presenting problem of money, and there's different things in our mind about what that means. And we, Jan did a fantastic job with freedom, and then there's this idea of limits. Right. So now we've got another layer already emerging as to what's going on what might be holding her back from the experience she wants. Really simple thing I want to call. Jen, if at any point you feel a lot of pressure, feel kind of weird, don't know what to ask. I'm right here. So I forgot to say that on the front end. I just want to make sure. You're doing great. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, so Jen, I'll try not to interrupt you again. Uh, please fire away. Hi, Courtney. So what does freedom mean to you? It means... So, so hard to put words to that right now. I guess without not having limits, not feeling limited, it feels like, yeah, not being limited is perfect. So how do I, do you want me to state that in a positive? Because I don't know how to say that other than. <laughs> um, feeling open, possibilities. Um, oh, like I get to make my own choices. Yeah, choices. Your own choices. My own choices. Yeah. So did you see the way she said that? Oh, making my own choices. You think we're getting closer to something? Mm -hmm. Might feel a little bit more powerful for her. Been at this for like I don't know, twenty mm -hmm. seconds without me constantly interrupting you. So here's a good time to get feedback. And the easiest way I do that, I'll just demo it real quick. So Courtney, what happens when you think about having the ability to make more choices? Yeah. <laughs> when I think about the ability to make more choices, actually that kind of, there yeah, there's this competing, I kind of feel like, um, with choices comes responsibility, and actually, I don't want more 
responsibility. <laughs> so I want freedom to choose the fun things, but I actually don't want more responsibility. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you heard that, right? With fun? Uh, do we have someone in front of us that we have a hunch maybe that she might want more fun? Yeah. And there's a bunch of different ways to have fun. Some cost money, some cost nothing. We could go down that route. There's a bunch. There's a bunch of different ways to approach this. Um, so uh, I'll do one, one more thing. Carry on. <laughs> it's apparently your class. <laughs> <laughs> Being all permissive. It's <laughs> cool. Um, Gordy, what happens when you think about all this? I feel confused. Right. Clients are already confused, right? Yes. We don't even need to make a confusion trance. <laughs> they do it all on their own. Yeah, pretty gross. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> and if we wanted to be more direct, we could use that as an induction here. Where do you notice that confusion? We get better retention on it, and that would be cool. But I don't want to, we don't want to go there just yet. Not too soon, Courtney. <laughs> um, so what are you interested in? Confusion or fun? Uh, fun. What, yeah, cool. What does fun look like to you? <clears throat> How would you like to experience fun? Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> How funny that it feels like it goes back to freedom. Okay. Um, want to be able to choose how I spend my time. So fun means I'm choosing how I'm spending my time and I'm spending my energy. So this is cool. We have a bit of a looping back into something she talked about before. And so sometimes with this type of approach, we kind of get stuck in this little loop where they kind of bring up the same ideas. Uh, what I'd like to do in a situation like this, because we're, we're exploring, now we're discovering different layers to what's going on here. Now we just want to try to draw her awareness to all those things. Remember the cool parts she did? A really simple way to do that. Courtney, what's the funnest way that you can also feel free and it be your choice. Just really consider that for a moment. The funnest way to feel free and it be my choice. I'm imagining myself making money doing this work and not the other work I've been doing. What happens when you think about all that? Here you go. You're amongst friends and you're safe. Um, it just, it feels like, it feels like freedom. <laughs> um, what was your question again? There we go. <laughs> so that's a pretty cool unconscious response, right? She went deep inward, came back, didn't know what the hypnotic amnesia just occurred <laughs> for all intents and purposes, right? Very nice light trance. So, Courtney, what would be the funnest way you could feel free and it be your choice? Feels like like the business has already been set up already, so I'm just showing up and doing the fun part, yeah. <laughs> which is working with people. Working with people. Yeah. Jan, what questions come to mind? Take a time. Are you getting any kind of an interesting insight here, or anything you're super curious about that you'd like to learn more about? We're not trying to solve this problem. We just want to create a space for her to learn. Questioning the how freedom and the fun relate. 
Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. Let's do that. I didn't hear that. What? Sorry, to how does the freedom and the fun relate together? So, Courtney, when you're looking at the most fun way for you to have freedom, how do they relate? How are they connected? Um, choice, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it just feels like I get to choose where I'm spending my time. But you know what, I have a question. How does that tie back to me feeling taken care of? Like that, I don't understand how we got so far away from that. <laughs> Human beings are complex, right? <laughs> Courtney, what happens when you think about being taken care of? So being taken care of also feels like I have so much more choice because then it feels like I don't have to do the things that I don't want. <laughs> I felt that one coming. Um, um, it feels like the the distance between between me and the fun is a bunch of things I don't want to do. Right. So if I were to choose to just let my husband take care of me financially, I don't have to do the things I don't want to do. But also, then I don't get to do the things I really. That trippy feeling yeah. you described a moment ago, what was that like? Um, wah, that's what yeah. <laughs> like, oh, like you're going under. Like if you have anesthesia, like that moment that you feel the anesthesia kick in or that the laughing gas kick in, that's what it felt like. Whoa. Like time just stretched. Yeah. Did you know your mind could create that feeling spontaneously? Sure. It must mean something because it came from you. Yeah. And where did you notice that feeling the strongest at? Um, right in front of me. Yeah. Not inside of me, but right in front of me. Like almost like I was, yeah. It maybe space stretch too, time and space. I have a question, and it might be a little rude. Uh -huh. I think it's important, and I don't think I would be doing the right thing if I didn't ask it. I could be wrong. Okay. Is there any choice that you just feel you're not willing to make right now? Sure. Yeah. It's just a pause. So I did it because she brought up choice, right? We heard her say choice, 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 choice. That kept coming out. So we just wanted to clarify whatever the hell that means, right? I don't know. Choice can mean a bunch of different things. I have, I have my own presumptions. Those are my presumptions. Yep. I have a question. I, what happened the megasecond before the anesthesia kicked in in front of it? Because I saw the, what happened, but I didn't see the, what led to it. But it was internal as far as I can tell. No, I secretly. I <laughs> well, he had asked a question about like choice, I think, or or, or it was I forget what the question was, but he asked a question. I went in to find it, and then it was like, like, like I. That's what yeah. I said. Mm -hmm. Told you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What choice do you not want to make? To do things that aren't fine. Like I want the whole process to be fine. Yeah. And there you go. So the questions I'm asking myself then are like, okay, is it not like what makes it not fine? And could I make that fine? But first, what makes it not fine? 
yeah. and uh, that it's hard and confusing. I don't actually know what I'm doing. So it's so much more fun when you know what you're doing so that you find your flow in it. Um, and I don't have flow yet in the creating of the business part. And so it feels hard. How do your eyelids feel right now? So, I don't know, I can take a nap. <laughs> yeah. And just for a moment, give yourself permission to really experience whatever this is. Oh, the, or if it's hard or like if it. Just experience all of it. Fully. Without any judgment. Really learn from this. When I tell myself I don't know what I'm doing, like it really sucks the fun out of it. Or if I tell myself I'm not sure. something you may consider is all the fun you've had before without even knowing how you did it. Unless, of course, that wouldn't be helpful to just have fun without knowing how. Because how could you ever know a thing like that? When you think about freaking out and having fun, I think about making fun of myself for freaking out. <laughs>
all the time. Oh. There you go. Yeah. It's that emotional state that I think I have to have before I'm allowed to have fun or instead of fun. frustration like there's certain good feelings that you don't let yourself have um, like upper like upper limits and stuff and like the way you turn yourself off is like with that emotion that you practice more for me a lot of times it's helplessness but this one doesn't feel helpless it feels overwhelmed and frustrated way more appropriate for me than fun. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> A moment ago, you said something really interesting. You mentioned feeling what's appropriate. What's appropriate about any of this? Prerequisite for having fun, feeling like you need to feel the other things. What did you mean by that? Um, so, like, how like joy is a more vulnerable feeling than yeah. than a you know a, a, an uncomfortable emotion. So, like, the way that we try to protect ourselves is by not allowing us to feel those good feeling, good feeling emotions, or we can only feel them to a certain extent or for a certain period of effort. So, um, the way that, I don't know that it's the way that I've protected myself, but it seems like it would be the way that I've protected So she talked about joy and vulnerability, <coughs> sort of the relationship between these things. And so uh, there's a, uh, when she wants to feel joy, that feels very vulnerable to her. And then she talked about maybe that's a protection mechanism. There's a lot of discovery happening right now. Um, I'm gonna ask you, Jan, anything you're curious about with that? Anything you're wondering about with that? Is there anything else she wants to tell us? Is there anything else that's relevant? Because of all the ahas you've already, all the inter information you've already been able to put together. Um, I just that I would like to to be able to feel. Fun, feel, experience, fun, um, in 
the creation process of my business. So we try that back to vulnerability, joy. Oh shit. So try not to say it out loud. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we want her to discover it. What just came up? <clears throat> yeah, what what just came up? The amount of fulfillment and good feelings that I imagine I would feel when I'm doing this in the way that I want to do it feels like I can't handle. Like, it's too big of a good feeling. I won't let myself feel it. <laughs> feel that chair, you're safe here with everyone. <laughs> Like, like we, we love to have our dreams, right? We love to have like this vision, but we stop ourselves from doing that because in the process of like taking action, you, you lose the fantasy of it, or that's not exactly what I mean. Um, like, where do you go from there? Like, if, if you're feeling that good, like, Oh, it's only down. It, it can only go like something bad has to happen after that, or like I don't know. Yeah. You afraid of it going down? I'm afraid of feeling really good. Yeah. And why is that? Because yeah, because then something bad happens. Could it be worse than not achieving the things you want to achieve? Yeah. yeah. How would that happen? To achieve it and then to lose it. Yeah. Um, that devastation. <laughs> to bigger and not happiness. Mourning the things we haven't lost. Haven't even had the opportunity to lose those things yet. What's the worst thing you could lose besides this stuck feeling? like to express that? Oh, God, I'm not throwing up. Oh, I'm not going to throw up, but that's... Yeah, it's got to come up sometime. <sighs> that's the sensation. Yeah. What was your question? What's the worst part about losing yourself? Sit with that, Courtney. Okay? 
I have a feeling there's something important there. Just have a, take a moment and sit with that, okay, before I start projecting my voice. So, did you see the head shake and then the insight? It's not real, right? This is just a way that the unconscious mind communicates constantly. Right? Now the hands are moving closer together, right? So the parts are starting to integrate, presumably. It could be a physiological sign of that. now when you think about all the fun you want to have, knowing that you confronted that and it didn't appear to be real. Um, well, right now I'm imagining myself doing like the creating of the business part and then and, well, hold on, I want to still see you. Take your time. This is what I call the infinite model approach. So she's, it sounds like kind of like a timeline things happening or something right now. We've had parts where it show up and all these interesting things spontaneously emerge. And she's doing it all though. We're just learning, just listening, exploring, becoming aware, discovering. We want to really honor the space for her to feel this, whatever she needs to sort of learn from it. I was imagining myself like doing the activities, like the creating the business activities, and I could see myself looking like very driven and like that, that hungry feeling, you know, which I love, um, that driven feeling, but I was second position, like I wasn't, or I wasn't associated, and then when I associate it to it, it still kind of feels like I'm not all the time. Yeah. She said when she tries to associate to that feeling of feeling hungry to do stuff and have fun building her business, she said, um, what was it you said? Not all the way comfortable. Not all the way comfortable. So we talked about how we allow the experience of the client to be the framework of the social. Now that becomes the thing we use. Okay. If they resist something, why? what's scary about that? And so here we can use the, uh, you said the comfort, right? Yeah. Yeah. lack of comfort. When you're thinking about lack of comfort, what's the opposite for you? And how would you get that? And what gives you that comfort okay. that, you're, that you're striving for? Um, I guess the, the feeling of Because the feeling of not being all the way comfortable is happening right there in my gut. And then as I started talking about it, it was like, yeah, really like the volume of the sensations. Um, anyway, um, um, I want, I, I guess, I want to be certain that the things that I am doing like those activities that are creating the business are ones that are going to actually be help. Like the, the discomfort I think is about uncertainty and like, am I wasting my time? Am I even doing this or anything like that? When you think about doing something that isn't right, how does that go in with the comfort? Well, I can do things that aren't right when the outcome isn't, when the, when the goal is to just have fun, it doesn't matter if things are done right or not. But if there's a goal that has to be met that is more like, you know, monetary, um, then feels like I can't afford to not do things right. And what would happen if 
If you fail, then you monetarily slipped for a bit. Yeah, the question that came to me was like, what if you did all the wrong things but still ended up right? Like, <laughs> that could happen. Said, what if you do all the wrong things and it still ended up right? What an interesting resource that is. Hey, Courtney, what happens to that feeling in your stomach when you think about doing all the wrong things and it still turns out right? <laughs> there you go. It was the laughter. <laughs> and then will come the emotion. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Doing a hell of a job, Courtney. Well, you said something about being scared about being vulnerable. Here you are. Learning how to do things right. But for you. There you go. Yeah. Hell of a roller coaster, huh? Yeah. We're going to open a theme park, guys. We're going to. What happens now, Courtney? You think about all this stuff. I think that um, I think that having that belief that I can do all the wrong things and still they're just still turn out right is a is a belief that I really like because. I can't control really the outcome of anything anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not the one who's in control. Um, so that feels like a belief that I'd like to move forward with. Yeah. Say it, <coughs> say it again louder for. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry guys. It's hard to project. You want to help me out? What did I say? <laughs> asking the wrong guy. I don't remember what I say. <laughs> oh, that's, that feels like a belief that I'd like to um, carry forward. Yeah. It's being able to do all of the wrong things and still have it work out right. Yeah. Have you ever had an experience like that before where you maybe set out on a journey and it didn't go as planned and maybe... Things got muddy along the way, but it still worked out. Yeah. Um, and it's usually like the hindsight, right? Yeah. When you're like looking back and you're like, that actually turned out fine. Or actually even better. Yeah. Yeah. How did it feel in the moment though? Well, <laughs> there's been times when I've been very tight and tense and wanting to control. Hey James, I didn't know you were in here. What's up? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and then other times where I just kind of had that knowing that things were gonna work out and just rolled with it. Yeah. And I much prefer that, but so but yeah. Yeah. What do you think differentiated the knowing from the not knowing and it's still working out either way? The intention. Ah. The intention to enjoy myself and feel good, or the intention to try to make it go how I want it to go. Right. Ooh, they're the same. Hmm. Are there other areas in your life where that, uh, that intention? Oh, that's the feeling like when I become aware of something. 
and I don't like it, and I'm, I'm ready yeah. to get my, I feel like that nausea kind of feeling, yeah. just for like a second. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What makes you most nauseous about all that? Um, the intention to control. Yeah. I really don't enjoy that at all. How does it feel here when you think about control? Okay, now we're okay. <laughs> um, tight and, and even like poison kind of. What's being yeah. poisoned? My happiness. Because mm-hmm. that's where serotonin is. Yeah, oh, okay. I didn't know that. I swear the people I work with are smarter than me. They know <laughs> all this stuff. She that's said that's where the serotonin is. Yeah. It's being created. So when she tries to control poisons her happiness. Yeah. And if there were a cure for that poison that you could take and cure that belly ache. Surrender. Surrender. Oh, you didn't hear, sorry, surrender. Maybe make it into a circle, get everybody up tight. <laughs> How's it feel to think about surrendering? Fun. Fun. Surrendering feels like fun. How's that work? Um, because then I'm not making the choices that I don't want to make. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm just being taken care of. That's cool. (laughs) That's cool. So what happens now, Courtney, when you think about all the cool things you discovered? And when you think about moving towards your goals, have fun. It feels like oh, it feels like fun. Yeah, it feels like fun. How's your belly feel? Bubbly. Bubbly. Bubbly belly filled with <laughs> fun bubbles, right? Hmm. Do those bubbles burst? Yeah, it's like they're carry like it's like it needs to be released, like it's yeah. yeah. So I'll probably burp a whole lot or something like that later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about, Courtney? I was already feeling complete when I opened my eyes, but I, I appreciate uh, the rest of it that we have yeah. Right I want to see if there's anything else. Testing. Let's play around a little bit with that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, might as well. So testing is cool. Um, the real test is obviously going out into the real world, right? Mm-hmm. Like people can have a cool session with you, but then that doesn't, like, if they don't go do the thing they want to do, I don't know. Like ultimately as the therapist, as the hypnotist, you really don't have control over what your clients do. Uh, I like to think about testing as just another part of this inquirious nature we're playing together with right now. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to think about it, but Courtney, what happens when you think about maybe going out and starting to do some business stuff? I mean, it, it's okay. Hold on. There we go. Because I'm imagining like I'm seeing myself so I want to like myself. Um, She's imagining, she's seeing things. <laughs> seeing the things that's being created. Yeah, so I'm imagining me doing these things, but I wasn't actually associated into that image, so I want to like really feel it. Um, it feels playful mm-hmm. and fun and like, 
Like I don't have, I'm not thinking of the outcome. Yeah. Playful without the outcome. I like that. Um, but what if things are going terrible? Mm. Make a video, nobody looks at it. Oh. Bunch of jerky comments. Oh. Jerk face jerks, I mean humans that we want to help. <laughs> I'm just seeing myself continuing in that word. Like I'm I don't need to make an assessment on that yet. I'm just Yeah. You're just gonna keep going. So that metaphor my logo is the path, right? For my clinic, it's all about the path. We just take one step on the journey. That's all that really exists, right? It's the path. How the hell can you ever know where that's gonna go? I don't know. I didn't know I was gonna be here five years ago, mm -hmm. hanging out with you cool people. Crazy. It was fun though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. What about, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of obstacles you might encounter. Oh, Cordy, what if you wake up one day and you just kind of feel low energy and you don't feel like playing? So I'm seeing myself in my bed with my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> the resources, right? That's something that Hermosi talks about, right? We just roll all about. She's building the archetype she needs right now to be successful under any condition. I didn't do any of this. Pretty cool. Uh, what if money gets tight? It's already tight. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so. I mean, I don't imagine it being tighter than it is now. Yeah. Is that going to make it so you can't play and have fun doing the Ooh. things you want to do? Thank you. Guys. Focus on that tight feeling in your belly for a moment. And just allow yourself to experience that feeling. What do you notice? Take your time. But don't judge it. Like the sensation is tight, but um, it feels like a, like this metal device that's like around my gut. Yeah. And just notice that metal device around your gut. Really feel that. Become aware of it. And if that had a lesson to teach you about this, what do you think it would be?
So there was something about like oh, the, if they intention is to protect me, like yeah, we know that. Um, but then the lesson is like it's like you need to be responsible. So she said, uh, the lesson is that I need to be responsible. Um, so Jan brought up a really good point you couldn't hear, but she said, uh, if there wasn't a lesson. Uh, so that's, a, you can utilize it if there's a not an answer, if there's not an experience, you go, so do you really need it then? Right? You can explore that. Uh, but if there's a sense of responsibility that came up for you, what do you suppose is the most important way you can feel more responsible actions you can take, things you can do. Does anything come to mind when you think about being responsible? Yeah, so response, being responsible has come up a lot. Um, yeah. Before I couldn't, like I couldn't have fun because responsibility and fun didn't, couldn't go together. Um, but that's, it doesn't feel like that's what's happening now. It's like, um, because fun is my responsibility. Um, because we're talking about money getting tighter earlier, and then I got tight in my bed. So she was talking about money getting tighter earlier, and that's when the tightness started around her gut. And she said, fun is my responsibility. Okay. What happens when you think, what happens to that feeling in your stomach when you think about all the ways you could have fun that don't require any money? Um, so we were talking about like money being tight earlier and then it felt like, cause we were, and then, um, then it felt like, oh, now I can't have fun in my business because, um, like, okay, so I'm having fun in my business, but then money gets really tight. So then it feels like, oh, now I can't do that. I have to do something I don't want to do. Because if I'm focusing all of my energy and my time in my business and that's really fun, but it's not bringing in the money, then it feels like, oh, well, now I have to do something else. And that's not like. Does that belly feel tight when you think about all that? Yeah. What's the most responsible thing you can do to have fun? Surrender. And what specifically are you surrendering? Control. Control. How does one surrender control? Um, by being present, saying yes to your current experience. Right. when you say yes to your current experience? No. What other experience could you have but the one that you're having? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, you said, um, when you say yes to your current experience, mm -hmm. you feel that loosen up. Yeah. What other experience could you have than what's here right now?
Oh. I see what that's about. It's squeezing when I'm trying to control the outcome. Why would it do that? Well, when it, control is, is tight, right? Yeah. 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 It's interesting though, control can be tight, but why would it squeeze? So let me know to loosen up. Holy moly, she said to let me know to loosen up. To relax, let go. Because it was that, when it started squeezing, it was when you had asked me like, what if money gets really, really tight? And I'm like, oh no, not that. I don't want to have to yeah. not do something I don't want to do. And I didn't ask you those questions because I was there when I started my clinic. Because sure, yeah. what? I didn't ask you those questions because I wasn't there when I started my clinic. Oh, you mean there like emotionally? Yeah. <laughs> like, holy well, shit, I got big bills. Oh. Yeah. Kids need shoes, fuck. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Gotta get clients, leave yet. I don't know what to do it. I won't sleep. Fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> so I went, it's a nightmare. But all the while, that tightness in your stomach was there to remind you to let go? Yeah. And why would it want you to let go? Because I don't know what the outcome's going to be. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. How can you best remember how to let go? Well, I think my gut's going to tell me. Don't write it. Yeah. How painful is that? How much does it have to hurt for you to... Oh, it doesn't have to hurt. Okay. I just feel the squeezing and then I know, oh yeah, that's my unconscious saying, chill the fuck out. <laughs> Let go. And bring it to your attention. Oh yeah, yeah. Because that, yeah, and we got that relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So you can see like an integration, you can see the parts, they were kind of disparately connected, there was tension between them. We didn't do... Parts work in like a traditional approach, but she knew how to do that, right? She kind of figured out her mind. We just had to get the space for her to sort of explore all the things going around. And slowly, the thing that was causing her a lot of discomfort because, became the method for her to create comfort while she's facing challenges. That's kind of cool, right? The thing that's a problem can become a solution. That's why I Maybe love this resources. method. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Um, so just, <sighs> what up? Any other things you want to go over? You tear this thing apart, have some fun, have a conversation with everybody here. Oh, cool. Oh, wait, what? Is there anything else you want to talk about? Nah, Sorry. nah. Ask nah. like eight questions at once and none of them made sense. <laughs> uh, yikes. I talk for a living. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think we got to give Courtney and Jan a hand. Yeah. That's a lot of right? I'm not sure how helpful I was. <laughs> Killed it, Jan. Yeah. Let's do Q&A. You raise your hand. I want to come a little closer to make sure everybody can hear me. I might have to move up or something. I just was wondering if the peanut gallery could ask what the yeah. series is about. Yeah, this is all the Q&A stuff here. Um, oh, you want to talk to her directly? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. yeah, you want to ask a question? Let's do it that way. What questions do you have for Courtney, folks? And then we can do Jan. So we can oh, be yeah. quiet and we can do... Well, that'll be fun. I'd like to know, given all you just went through and all the feelings you had that brought up all the old and new and present and history and everything, I want you to go inside a little bit and what was it like before you learned how to do this appropriate behavior. What did it feel like? What was life like? Maybe you can... Oh, before, before I learned about um, all like those joy things. and freedom being like uncomfortable. All of those things. All, um, of, all of them. Probably carefree and playful, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. How does that feel? I mean, like that's probably what life should be more like. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. So, Paul, I think your question was basically, uh, what, what was it before? What was like before the problem sort of like, happened? You didn't 
my that my thinking is when I have somebody with a phobia, mm -hmm. you didn't always have that. What was it like before? Yeah. And what led you there kind okay. of thing? Cool. And so because you can unlearn what you can learn. <laughs> Okay, I appreciate that. I just want to make sure I'm getting it on the recording. And then Courtney said, joyful and playful and more fun. Basically, it yeah. like it was a better experience. And that's cool. how it should be done or something. Yeah. Like that. that's, that's how that. it should be. I feel like, yeah, life probably should be more like that. Not for me, but like for everybody. Like, just like That's a fun way to experience it. What other questions <laughs> uh, for Courtney, folks? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we need to read that. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, about feeling taken care of. But my unconscious is taking care of me because it's letting me know when I'm trying to control the outcome yeah. and when I need to let go. That was really good. So just for the recording, the question was, we didn't talk about the husband as much. And we did, we did bring that up. And then that yeah. was the, that was like kind of like a watershed moment where we looped back into the other part. Remember how she did the thing with the hands? And once we, we did all this work over here, and then we looked at that, and all we had to do was glance. And you actually did it yourself. You're like, but what about the... And it was just, <laughs> you know, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so we just kind of brought it back. Um, but that's a really good question, because we didn't give that a lot of attention. That was a, a bit of a choice I sort of wanted to make, because I can't control whether a client lights up another cigarette. How the hell can I control what their husband or spouse is going to do? But if we can bulletproof the client, right? And we did some kind of rigorous testing. Like we saw some stuff come up afterward. Uh, I think they have a better chance of getting out there and having a more productive, happy experience in life. Uh, though there's things we could do to sort of maybe try to address that. Like, so what if he's doing this or that behavior? And what would you, you know, we could play with it that way. But I think uh, I've, the idea of organic hypnosis is coming from the client. I kind of want to put my attention there. But that's, that's a good instinct, too. And that might be something you could check or you could work through. It's fine. They, they all would go to the same place eventually, I think. Uh, this just seemed like a little bit more direct. I hope it's kind of my thinking on it. Uh, really good question. That's awesome. Thank you for... That's the kind of stuff. So well, what other questions for Courtney? Yeah. Question per se, but something that came up for me because I feel that in life in general and with clients, as they're describing and kind of taking these steps in life, yeah, they have this confusion around. I don't know either. I have a fear of success or a fear of failure. And when you were going through what you were going through, I kind of had this little aha moment because it was well. If I do succeed, I can potentially fail and lose it all, and not only feel worse, at least at the yeah. moment, yeah. right? Than not even trying. And so, as they try to realize if this fear of failure or fear of success, well, I don't know, <laughs> let's find out, they kind of made me feel like they're intertwined, yeah. right? And I kind of, that's where I was like, oh, yeah. it's both because. Yeah. You could succeed and then fail, and not only feel yeah. so much worse potentially, and so I don't really look at it. So I just kind of wanted to bring that up. I don't know yeah. if anyone has more to add about that. Yeah. So sort of uh, one of the things that was brought up just now was uh, this idea of the fear of success or fear of failure. And an audience member mentioned she sees this with clients and kind of recognized it, it's two sides, what is it, two sides of the same co coin? I don't, yeah, I saw the metaphors. Sure. I don't, yeah, both sides of the coin, what, yeah, they're kind of the same, right? But it's all just a fear in a way, right? Um, and I think it did tie really elegantly to, in this case, to Courtney's experience of control. I don't want to go for it and get the joy because then the joy might go away. And it's like, that's a trap. But we talked about mourning the losses that haven't even occurred yet. I'm terrible with this. Like, I'm like, what if something happens to my kids? Yeah. And like, holy shit, like, the, like, let it happen and then deal with it, right? Because that's all you can do. Like, it's just something I think humans, we just have a tendency to do, right? Um, so I think it's a really powerful thing to notice. Right? It's just that fear. Um, but then, 
what I think is cool is uh, the control and like the, the the way the unconscious mind is giving you that tightness in the stomach wound up being the indicator that we need to let go. It's cool, right? The thing that's the problem becomes a solution. What the hell is that? Like, uh, I think that's kind of fun. Yeah, what, what, uh, what else? Anybody want to uh, piggyback off of that or had any kind of realizations about how things are kind of interconnected in a way? Yeah, go James. Have you had any, using this approach, have you had any resistant clients who kind of just get stuck in one um, change? Yeah. Um, but what we do is we, I start to utilize that then. So, uh, so, okay, so for the recording, James asked, uh, have you ever had a client kind of get stuck in a loop? And we, we kind of had that in the beginning, right? It was, yeah. it was like, we're talking about this theme and this theme came up. So uh, then we decided to utilize that. I don't remember what we did. I'll have to watch the recording, but uh, I just kind of used that. Let me give it, let me think of an example. Uh, so recently, one of my students had a situation like that, and there was just the, the resistance was actually more outright. And so now, well, we can just leverage that. So, do you ever feel like you're trying to create change, and there's a lot of resistance coming up for you? What's the most important thing you need to resist? What's that coming from? Where, where's that coming from? Right? We just want to start to explore that now. So whatever comes up in front of us, we want to explore it. If it's a looping situation, I can't remember how we pierced that, but that was the break. I have to go back. I, yeah. Apologies, I don't. I'm like really in the moment when I'm working with people, so I don't remember anything. I'm like I said that that was pretty good. You know? <laughs> Holy hell! <laughs> it shocked me. Uh, 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 yeah. Apologize, Jane. We'll, we'll get that though. I'll I'll take a look. Um, yeah. So, uh, any other types of questions for Courtney, maybe unrelated to this sort of line? Of, yeah, Nicole? Paul? Yeah, do you have uh, any experience with working with hypnotists versus yeah. folks that, that they, how I, they respond to all this? Yeah, I don't work. It's better with not hypnotists, right? Because <laughs> they know all my bullshit tricks, and they're like, well, I shouldn't say that. They know all my tricky little things I do, right? Or like if there's like a parts work thing, like she, you could hear her like I'm associated, disassociated. They are just more, um, I think, open to the experience because they don't have those sort of metaphors in their mind that they're using to sort of help them navigate. I find that they, it's more experiential for non hypnotists Yeah, the me other too. One is more designer or something. Yeah, you said that better. Paul said it like, um, it's more experiential for non hypnotists and that's what we're doing, right? So we're using experience, the nature of the client's experience. That's how we're, we're using that for the framework of the session. That's a really well said. The whole point is to get their trust enough for them to experience the change they yeah. need, not for you to yeah. do whatever you're doing. Yeah, and then, then they get scared, right? Like, so Paul said the whole point is to get them to experience what they need. Uh, and I love the way every point where I, my intuition said, She's getting a little nervous there. You yeah. can say something, yes, you're so good, you're so great, or whatever yeah. you said. I yeah. can't remember. It, every time it came up, you did that. And I think oh. that's, that's like going, uh huh. That word is so big. Yeah. You just say it at the right time, it says yeah. everything to them. You're doing right. right. You're on the right track. Yeah, so Paul made an observation that when Courtney may have been having some discomfort, I would sort of provide a warm, sort of almost like encouraging, just more keeping her in the moment of those uncomfortable experiences is how I think about it. And um, I can't do that if I'm thinking about other things in a session, though. So my, I, it's a bit embarrassing to admit in front of all of you. But I remember when I used to do like pre-talks, I would get so frustrated uh, at my clients because like, they'd have this really spontaneous emotional reaction. I'd ask them a question or I would some just brilliant idea. And then I would get annoyed with them because they would have all these spontaneous insights. Like, you should have fun up. <laughs> I got another 45 minutes to get through. It's going to be like a three-hour session. Holy hell. So I don't do that. I, would, I don't like to give advice, but that's not a good way to react to the client's spontaneous experience. That's, don't like sharing that. Um, but with this approach, I don't need to do that. I can just kind of let them, it can just be whatever it needs to be. 
that we can kind of use it. Does that, does that kind of make sense? I lose everybody. Okay. <laughs> Do you feel like you knew that the parts and all those different pieces were? It yeah. looked like it was working. She was reaching out everywhere. Yeah. Out. Did you feel that too all the time or most of the time? Yeah. So Paul asked if I felt uh, sort of the parts integrating with her. Uh, I think I'm just kind of observing and noticing things, but I don't really care if that metaphor of parts shows up in a session. Sometimes it almost looks more like a like a like a phobia thing. It might just be a fearful response. And I, well, I guess that would that would make sense with parts, right? That would you would say that's the part. Um, to me, all these things converge, though. Even uh, when I was using scripts, uh, if you think about scripts, there's like metaphors of parts within them, right? You might be doing a smoking cessation session and might be like, yeah, you're gonna mow down those cigarettes with an Uzi if it's someone that like Rambo movies and that was their hero <laughs> archetype. But like, that's just the part of them that's doing that. And then there's the enemy part, right? And all the other emotional responses that come up. And about any kind of a script, if you think about it, there's elements and themes of parts that are being triggered within the framework of that story. So I, I like, after a while, I was like, well, that's kind of similar to doing like the cool Jacqueline six step reframe parts thing that I used to do. That was awesome. Uh, so I, I kind of feel like those themes kind of interplay through all client work, and that's why that stuff's so powerful because um, it comes from them. With this approach, we're just kind of letting them, we're letting the shape of the session occur spontaneously. Uh, does that kind of answer your yeah. question? Well, that's how I think about it. Uh, versus, um, but yeah, you, you do start to develop a weird. A weird intuition with people like I, I mentioned like the the laughter then the emotion and the insight and you, you start to see these kind of interesting organic patterns when people are uh, creating change quickly like that yeah that's sometimes you get weird insights and you're not really sure where the hell that level of detail came from that was weird but I think you're just picking up on interesting micro pieces of information maybe but you're kind of really open and listening like you that. You're saying you are? Or yeah. Okay. Yeah, they might make a gesture and you might it just might get an image in your mind about that. It's very curious. Like, oh, do you drink a lot of coffee? If they make like a gesture that's familiar or something and then it's tied to it somehow. And you get to go down that weird avenue. <laughs> are you just like, you know, I, it's, it's paying attention and listening. Um, 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 so that's cool. Anything else for Courtney, folks? Any other Anything that I said it's super unclear and weird and out there and you want me to go, like, can I make it more clear so far? Okay. I'd like to kick it over to Jan. Uh, Jan, what was that like for you sitting here? Kind of participating in the session? It was good and it reminded me how much uh, everybody's perception of things it, it got in fact really anchored in the mod their, their Courtney's model of the world. Mm -hmm. oh. Because that's critical. When she was saying certain things I went you, you sort of assume this dynamic woman, what, what do you mean you're gonna not gonna be able to be successful? So it doesn't matter what I think. Wow. Damn. That's really good. So for the recording, Jen said, um, anchored in uh, the client's model of the world and the importance of that. Because from the outside looking in, you can see Courtney's like this stunning dynamic presence. And you, in your mind, success is a matter of time, right? Uh, but that doesn't mean they feel that way. I think that's very important, you know? I, the amount of people you see, you're like, you're so talented, what the hell, why just go, I have this with my students, I'm like, can you just do the fucking thing? I tell like, go make the content, post it, but they're dealing with an inner reality. There's all this stuff they've got to pass through to be able to consistently show up and take action. And then they like, sometimes we get stuck in that confusion resistance thing that happens and it's like, oh, you know what to do. We just have You're it. talking about the, the hip that's going through their learning curve? Yeah, like yeah, right. And it's like, um, or like building a business and all that stuff. It's like, you, any, all this shit works, right? You can, emails, you can do social media, you can do any kind of a marketing strategy, but it's only going to work if you work it. Like the stuff works, like you just got to do it a lot. And then everybody sucks at it and they figure it out. And it's, it's cool. And, and then you get to make courses about it, I guess. That's what they do. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> kind of, um, yeah. So that, I think that was brilliant, Jan. Really cool. 
Uh, any questions for Jan, though? Folks. Yeah, I have a question. So what did you learn, if anything, from hearing the questions that Vinny was asking me, like the, the way that he was formatting those questions? I was impressed and learned exactly how to be as vague as possible. <laughs> and I'll usually go through it because you're like, oh, I know what to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. You hear, oh, Marks, let's do Marks. Oh, yeah, I know what exactly to do. And so the organic part of it is to gently lead you so that you're doing it. Yeah, and the, the hypnotic questioning that like just whoosh, takes you so deep, right? So for the uh, recording, Courtney asked, uh, what did you learn from the questions? I asked and Jen said, just to let the client kind of lead themselves down the path. So we have all these amazing, there's just brilliant stuff out there. We've got so many smart people in our, we're lucky to have some of these people, it's incredible. Um, so I wanna be careful here. Uh, just This is kind of just a different way to think about it. We're, we're just allowing the client to go down the journey. Like you said, Jan, it's, they're kind of directing it more. People call this like an indirect approach and I kind of feel like it's more direct because they're doing it all. I know that I don't want to be confusing about language in that way because we, we know the, the standard thing in the our industry is like direct is more of that you know authoritarian style and then we've got the air indirect and we associate that with Erickson. This seems more direct to me just yeah. because I'm letting the client do it versus me doing it to them, or, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't I don't want to get silly and start reframing stuff though and it's probably a semantical thing and it's not that important. Uh, really good. Yeah, go James. So it seems like the basis of your question is sort of similar to the that book Clean Language where you're just sort of oh. noticing what they say, repeating it back to them and then asking them what it means. So yeah. Uh, I have not that's Dave Grove or Grove Grove. Who's that? Uh, I don't know. I haven't read that book, so I feel a little bit. I'm a little afraid to comment on it. Book aside, yeah. When you're asking questions, it seems like you're noticing what they say, like uh, type this and then you say, okay, what, 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 is, yeah. what does that mean to you? Yeah, the clarity of meaning is really good. I think there was a couple times when I just asked, what does that have to do with this or something? Yeah. I think it's giving them the, so we talked about the five principles on the front end, right? It's the leads formula, so listening, exploration, awareness, discovery, and space. I think about like we're just giving them the space to really learn from their experience they're having, and that becomes sort of the dynamic of the uh, session. The repeating, I think, is helpful sometimes, uh, just because I've said things back to clients and they had no clue that they said it. They're like, holy shit, I said that? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> weird, you know, it's kind of, they kind of bloated out maybe in an interesting way. Um, so yeah, I think there's a similarity to that. But, uh, it's more like a quest for learning. That's why we talk about listening, listening with their eyes, listening with their whole being. Uh, and so it's like, as you give people an opportunity to get clarity around this stuff, I think they, I think just interesting resources naturally emerge and then we can leverage those. Uh, does that kind of help James? That's nice. Cool. What, what other questions have we got, folks? Repeat that listen exploration, that little... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, leads, so it's a listen. Wait, listen? Uh, listening, yeah. Okay. Exploration. Mm -hmm. exploration. Then the awareness emerges, right? New levels of awareness. And as we do that, the discovery just naturally happens. But it's all predicated off of listening. And then on the back end, it's just the space, right? And these are really... Um, this is a nonlinear approach, though, so it's a little hard to explain. I don't care where we start. I don't care how we approach it. Uh, this, those five things kind of organically show up. And to kind of tie it back to the metaphor I talked about in the beginning, if you imagine the first time human beings sat down together and just decided to listen to one person talk, they were probably listening. It's an exploration of each other's internal reality to clarify what they were talking about, new awareness, and we discovered new insights about each other, and there's that space there with them. It kind of happens. So that kind of makes sense why we're, I like that framework. I like that uh, sort of metaphor for thinking about change work. Probably the biggest step we took in our evolution was that moment. 
big statement. I had no scientific validation for that. But the moment we decided to really start to build community, must have took place there. In societies, and we could emerge and work together and cooperate. The scientists do better when they collaborate versus when we have them work in isolation. It's, um, uh, that's kind of the thinking behind that. Yeah, go ahead. So, I have a question. Yeah. When you do a session in this, state, in this uh, way, you know, working with Courtney, she knows how to take herself deep into the trance. Yeah. But a lot of clients, people that we see off the street, they don't know all of that. So, yep. when you're doing something like this, do you say, okay, just close your eyes and go inside and find. No. Or you just, just talk yeah. to them like, like you did. That's a beautiful question. So she said, um, it's sort of around hypnotic phenomena. And she made a very good point. She said, ah, hypnotists sort of already know how to go into trance. So what's it like in the real world? And I find this hits them so hard because they're... Courtney, can you... Yeah, go ahead, Courtney. It's I, didn't even, I did not take myself into trance. His yeah. questions. Yeah. The, he, he's a listener right. of problems to, and that's taking me. Like, I felt the trance happening, but I was not at yeah. all. Right, but we practice trance every day. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we get better and better with each time. And yeah. so it's a response that we, come, that we have. And sometimes clients can be so wound up, and they just, they just yeah. they start to go, why are you asking me all these questions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like so, that. That's such a good, uh, so, so just for the recording, uh, so uh, hypnotists already know how to go into trance, and then uh, what if the clients really wind up, wound up, and like, what are you doing, right? Why are you asking so? So, so to be completely honest, if I'm not doing a demo, I would have asked like four questions, and then the session would have been like probably I don't know. I can't predict it to be completely what honest. Would have been like statement? twelve minutes, you know. I probably would have asked like four things. I wanted to respect this because I was trying to give Jan some time to kind of get the experience this too. Um, but, but uh, if you have a client that comes in and they're really wound up, just utilize that, right? Just use it, utilize it. So I, I, I'm noticing you seem a bit frustrated or like you just seem a bit wound up. What's going on with that? They're like, that's, that's, that's. right? And they'll, they'll have this kind of unconscious response as they try to articulate it. And they go, well, what is that? Uh, let them kind of experience that now, and that can be your gateway in the trance. So you can kind of just use whatever. Um, does that make sense? It's easier if we, maybe that'll come up if we do another demo and we can kind of play with it. Um, yeah, it just doesn't matter. I didn't understand that you just asked four questions in your whole session. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's that fast, right? I can't really when predict it. When you get it, to the pay, pay dirt. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it just doesn't, the, 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 it's actually faster, I find, um, than what you saw here typically. And, uh, but to be fair, I pretty much see smokers, so there are some reoccurring themes you have. You never want to jump to conclusions in those sessions, but you kind of have a sense for people that have that problem. I, I, I help CEOs quit smoking, and I help people that can barely pay their bills quit smoking. And uh, the CEO might be a little bit more willing to take responsibility and hold themselves accountable faster is maybe the only outlier. But the problems are still the same. The same they talk about the same stuff, but they're like, I'm going to take this on, I'm going to do it. They have more of that type of an energy, I would say. Um, but yeah, I think ultimately it doesn't really matter. I deal with all different kinds at all yeah. different levels too, so I I can't really predict what they're bringing to no. until I ask them like, trick questions. Yeah. But, and I, I want to find out their spirituality, I want to find out how to yeah. talk to them, I want to, you know. Right. Yeah, I um, Gosh, I feel like I didn't answer your question well though. No. Um, so what's it like in the real world? Yeah, this is the only way I work with people. Well, I and um, they just like don't, I don't know, for whatever reason, I don't, I don't encounter that very often. Um, it's just the opportunity that presents itself is the opportunity I'm gonna take, to right. use a metaphor. And then, so if it's, they seem kind of restless or if they seem frustrated, I would just use that now. Because right? it's all coming from them. We talked about how there's an expression out there, uh, all roads lead to Rome. But if you just see it as all roads are Rome, because it's all coming from them, you just use the thing in front of us. Right? Uh, so, does that help at all? Roads are Rome. I like that. Yeah. It's like it's, 
And, and, and I think, according to my historian friends that love that stuff, they're like, that's the most important part of Rome, right? Rome would, Rome would be defined by the road because it was the vehicle that they used to control all the outlying empires and how they would manage resources and maintain control. Uh, so I have cool nerdy friends and they know all this stuff. <laughs> like, I throw a metaphor and I'm like, thanks for the lecture, bro. Oh, cool. Well, like that helps. Somebody bet your hand up. I didn't see when I looked it's, up your stuff. They're all in the app now. Yeah. It's, I'm sorry. It's, it's in the app, but we'll go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, somebody give me the time. Just curious. So we got. Does anybody want to play around doing our social real quick? Anybody want to see if we can. I highly recommend being the client. Does anybody want to? Jump on the roller coaster. <laughs> it's cool, yeah. Does anybody want to be a hypnotist? Still, but sorry. I love how I volunteer you. All right, let's go. No, nobody. Okay. You be the hypnotist. That's. It's boring for you, but. It's cool. I get. To, I feel like I just. I almost felt bad when. Um, yeah, when that like, I learned like. <laughs> Something about when they said like anything about Vinny being cool when I'm doing this, and like I really want to give an opportunity for other people to learn, I guess. But I got a lot of stuff up online though. If you want to see me doing this stuff with people, I'm really cool. And, you know, party and see how I do it. But since you've got another 22 minutes with me here, would anybody like to jump into the hot seat? Super brave. Okay, I won't twist your arm. Um, yeah, I'd like a restroom break and I'll do something. Yeah, that sounds cool. All right. I don't know how much time we have left, though. Yeah. Ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't want to cut that short. It's such like an authentic, genuine response. You know? Uh, I was like, do I like... I was going to show a couple things and then back off and then do a Q&A. But you just went there so, so vulnerably. So I thought that was... Did we get something out of that? Did we learn? Oh, yeah. 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 Hell of a job, Courtney. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't see the start of the session, but I noticed yeah. that obviously there was a point where she was at threshold and there was something happened and a lot of emotion and just came up. Do you consider that an ad reaction or is it just a release of an ad? I wasn't it really sure. Really matter. I wasn't sure. Uh, I've had several of those at this point and uh, one time I asked a lady, what happens when you think about never smoking again? It's the first question I ask her, and she just a massive panic attack in front of me. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> you know? Um, but once she was done, experiencing, I just sat, like you saw when she was kind of being a bit emotional, I just kind of grounded her, you know, feel the chair, you're here, you're safe, you're amongst friends, just kind of bringing her back to that. Giving some, uh, I guess, comfort. Uh, once they're through the other side of that, I'm convinced most of the work is done. The conscious mind just hasn't caught up yet. Mm -hmm. The unconscious mind's already had a powerful experience, but then it's got to integrate. Right? Uh, she had several, though. Yeah. You just kept her? going and going. Uh, yeah. Is there a point where you feel intuitively that I'm done? It, she's good. Yeah. That's a really good question. I'll, I'm going to come back to that. It's really good, Paul. Courtney, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was going to say, so there's Diane. So I, I had a session with Diane, and I had like a really big emotional response like that. And I said, I called it an ad reaction. It was like, no, if it were an ad reaction, you wouldn't have remembered it. What that is, yeah. is just really getting, that's just a powerful experience that yeah. got to the root. Like a lot of catharsis. Yeah. That's what yeah. she said. And I was like... I know what I experienced. Yeah, I've had ab reactions and I remember them and they're terrible. Yeah. <laughs> you get ab reactions, it's like yeah. you'll remember that. Yeah, you'll remember no, them for the rest of your said, life. Like it, I said, it, no, I don't mean the person. Oh, the, the, okay. the hypnotist will remember. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, I deal with a lot of trauma and yeah. you get, I get to the edge of them, but I, I don't right. let them really happen. Usually, yeah. I mean, sometimes you can't stop. Them. Right. Yeah, and you just sit there, you just hold that kind of that, that, that comforting space for them, allow them to really experience the thing. I don't want to necessarily pull them out of it because there's a lot of value in that, exactly. but I don't want to torture somebody either. The biggest right? thing so about our reactions is it's how you handle it. If you're used to yeah. it, if you go, now, now, you're just fine. Keep yeah, going. I didn't care. Like you yeah. did. It is it's yeah. 99% fine. Yeah, and I was like, I was wondering in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, they're going to think I'm 
lunatic. Like, <laughs> but I'm like just kind of used to seeing people have those wild, intense experiences. And I think that's most of the work. So the example I was talking about before, uh, that lady in super intense app reaction. And then I still followed up with her, but she was done smoking at that point. Right? And I learned, like you said, horrible traumatic things happen to her that should happen to no kid. And cigarettes were tied to it in a really disgusting way. Well, they're the um, only friend that some people have yeah, that's true. Yeah. They can light up any time. Yeah, right. Yeah. They um, think. They right. Think. Oh, yeah, same with food. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I just made the decision that I wanted to follow up with her, see how she's doing after. Why did you say that you thought you were alluded to? I don't, I oh, just I just was wondering if people thought um, it's too far. I was just kind of letting her really experience that. I didn't know no. folks had seen this type of a thing before. Um, when you see an app reaction, that's about the nth degree of fat, right? Yeah. And, and you take it, and what I do inside of me, because of personal experience, I had a lot of trauma. I, I went to a hypnotist once, and she got in the middle of her ab reaction, and she freaked out. And I, right. I gave her hell. I said, I'm just beginning to work. What are you doing? Stop it. I was pissed off. Yeah. And I didn't, wasn't a hypnotist then. I knew something. I knew in, being interrupted and not welcomed was terrible. So I don't do that. I welcome it. And to me, yeah. what happens is I get goosebumps like right now I'm getting because I'm remembering stuff. I go, pay dirt. And I yeah. let it go, except with my nice yeah. comments. Yeah, I just know they're going to get through it. See, the and I know body, it's important. We want to heal. We are naturally healing. We don't, doctors right. don't heal. Your body does. Magic does. Right. Yeah. And the same, I think, is with yes. the mind and the body. They, they want to heal. Hold up one sec, just Paul, that's really good. I just want to make sure, Tim, do you know how much time we got left? Yeah, five minutes. Okay, so one more thing I want to share. Uh, so we want to utilize everything that takes place after the session, right? Or you might call it you know, challenges. If you're working with a smoker, who knows, maybe their wife leaves them, some kind of catastrophe occurs, and I don't want them to go back to the thing that's enslaved them for decades. And so what I like to use as a metaphor is I just talk about healing and I use the metaphor of like if you cut your hand, we tend to think that the healing starts when you see the blood coagulate or the scar forms or we bandage that. But the healing actually starts the moment you get cut, right? All the resources rush to the fore. And I use this just to kind of illustrate, you know, you might experience whatever it could be after today. It's not, life's not going to be sunshine and rainbows as much as we like it to be. And there's that beautiful experience we have when there's trance and there's insights. That's not going to last forever. At some point, you kind of level set and you go back to reality. So what I like to say is, it doesn't matter what happens. From you, that's just your body healing. That's just your mind sorting this out. I don't care if, you, if it's a smoker. I don't care if you have cravings, whatever that is. Just understand that's your body figuring out how to solve this. It's your body actually detoxing and getting rid of this. So now we're just giving them that opportunity to leverage the things that would have been problems and they can say to themselves, you know what? This is great. I feel like shit, you know? But I'm fixing this problem right now. Versus, uh, I feel uncomfortable, I need to call Vinny. I don't want that, because I can't, I can't do these things for them. I want to help them uh, develop whatever they need to to, 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 to solve the problem. The, the leads for me, the idea is that optimal leadership helps leaders develop other leaders. That's the idea. That's the highest form of leadership. So it's uh, not me being a champion and looking heroic and being awesome. It's more like I want them to, them to be their own source of healing. I want their mind to do it. Wow. So, does that kind of make sense? Yeah. I think they call it transference or something like that in psychology. I don't want, I want to escape that. And ultimately the source and the power comes from that. So the last thing is really wanted to make sure I nailed that. So that's that helps. great. That's Shit a great kind of <laughs> I, I well, say to people in my office, I try to remember say to every person, I say, my job is to get you out of here, not in here. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. And you're going to be able to do it. I'm giving you right. tools to do it yourself. I love that. Okay. Yes. Anything else, folks? That was great. That was cool. Really right on. Elegant yeah. and wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Is it in, but can you repeat, Ed, why don't you talk about how you do organic self defenses? Yeah. Just run that through real quick. We have five minutes. Three. 
We're gonna do it. Okay, cool. Organic self hypnosis. Ready? <laughs> so, uh, think about any problem you would like to get some insight with right now. Okay. Just kind of nod your head once you have something. Sweet. Okay, take a deep breath in. And exhale slowly. And allow your eyes to close if you want them to. And just scan from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet as you think about this problem. Just become aware of what happens in your body as you think about this problem. It could be a feeling, it could be a sensation, who knows. Once you become aware of that, just sit with it. That's all we're gonna do, just sit with it. Don't judge it. Don't try to do anything to it. Just experience it fully. And pause now and let you do that for about 30 seconds or so. That's kind of the approach. And I come back and I do that a couple times. Um, not more than three minutes. And just kind of go in and out, in and out. And that's so I lost 50 pounds, right? I did the, the calorie stuff I talked about. If anybody wants that information, just DM me or message me. I'll show you how I did it. But that, literally that process, and I don't care. I just I want to become aware of that feeling and I, I want that feeling. I don't want it to be judged. I presumably it's trying to do something for us. Why would I resist that? It's probably an insight there. Um, um, man, I wish we had more time. Damn, that's cool. You guys are cool. Uh, yeah, all right.